G'day Anzacs, Karen Brewer here, Bush Telegraph, uh, 15th of September. This is my third attempt at trying to get on today. Interesting, isn't it, Australia, that somehow, and New Zealand, of course, I should just call us all Anzacs, shouldn't I? It's interesting, isn't it, how they go into overdrive to try and silence people that are just speaking out because apparently speaking out's against the rules now. Hopefully we're all up to speed with the um, with the laws that uh, Chairman Dumbo Dan is looking to implement today, trying to get legislation passed where if you speak, you're going to end up in jail and still the masses sleep. I found it interesting to note that a 60-year-old woman apparently drove through the office windows of Christopher Bowen in Fairfield. Isn't that interesting, Australia? 60-year-old woman drove through the, uh, the office windows of federal election, federal elector Christopher Bowen in Fairfield. Oh, my own stomping ground. Apparently she's 60 and drove through the windows. Interesting, isn't it, Australia? And, of course, we have the continued surveillance that goes on of all peoples. Of course, none's going on within the judiciary. No, there's no surveillance of our judiciary. That's interesting, isn't it, Australia? For those of you that might not know Australia, yesterday in New Zealand, Dilworth College, Dilworth Grammar, came out saying that they had charged people in relation to historical sexual abuses. Yes, folks, Dilworth is a Freemason Demolay school. The exact same setup applies to New Zealand as does apply to Australia. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, Australia? And Delma is here saying it is martial law. And yes, it is with UN troops. Um, everyone, all Anzacs need to pay close attention to what's happening in Victoria, New Zealand. Logistics, population-wise, very similar. Landmass, very similar. And, of course, a judiciary that is, in fact, out of control. Got to join the dots on this, folks. Those Masonic lodges that sit in every district are there for a reason. They are the local level whisper catcherers before things become public. I'm glad to see that most people are now wide awake to the network of filth that is our so-called media. And the connection, of course, with the media started back in 1873 with the Cleveland Street scandal in London. That is when they decided they really must control all media. And that is, in fact, what we call media today. Interesting, isn't it, Australia? Um um, oh, well, this is right. This is right. Sorry, there's um, Debbie's DCB is saying that the guy that got you, everyone, everyone that stands up against the government is going to be labelled mentally ill. Yeah. It's a little bit like um, the guy in Brisbane who many, many years ago went on a so-called rampage, shot three police officers in Brisbane, and then they found his body uh, in a park a couple of days later. Um, it turned out he wasn't actually mentally ill after all. No, he was actually out of St Paul's. St Paul's, yes, he'd been an abuse victim inside the Freemason Demolay network there. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, Australia? It's interesting, isn't it, that Peter Dutton came out of St Paul's in Brisbane? Interesting, isn't it, Australia? It doesn't matter which politician or which journalist, which magistrate or judge that you research or come out of a Freemason Demolay school. That's the network, guys. That is the network of filth. For those of you that don't know, there was, in fact, a gentleman by the name of Yuri Brezmanov who um, defected from the so-called KGB back in the 80s. If you've never watched any of his videos, I suggest you do um, because he does, in fact, touch on this network of filth, although perhaps at that time Yuri did not really understand the scale of the network. This, and, and, and so during the course of that video, he refers to they and communism and socialists and all that sort of stuff. It's got nothing to do with that. If you actually research the timeline of Freemasonry into Russia, 
So you've got to know the history about Catherine the Great, okay? And then you've got to know the history moving forward into the late 1800s when they came back and did it all again. In addition to that, you also need to know the history of China. You see, back in the 70s, Gough Whitlam peddled this mantra of we need to be part of the Asia-Pacific. Remember that? Do you remember that? Because what Gough actually was was a Freemason foot soldier and his task was to infiltrate China. Okay, so let's look at the timeline of the infiltration, shall we? Now, we already know the Freemason demolays. They really loathe people who have children and stuff, you know, family units and all that shit. That's got to be broken down. So let's just have a look at China. Now, remember in the 1980s, China came out with the one-child policy. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? I hope so. Are you going to follow the timeline of Whitlam, Fraser, Hawke and Keating, Howard, Rudd, Gillard, Rudd? Abbott. And it's really important when you look through their bios on www.aph.gov.au and you research their bios, just scroll down a bit, it's all there, how many trips they take and where they take them. Kim Beasley, now he is an interesting one with regards to that because he was the foreign minister for a long time You and he came out of Hollywood Senior High, yeah, well-known, well-documented. Freemason Demole School. And another good one to look at is people like Peter Reith. Yes, that's very interesting. It's along with the likes of Julie Bishop, that's really interesting. Lots of comings and goings and backwards and forwards. And how does all this relate? Well, I'll tell you. You remember the video we did about, I did about Catherine the Great of Russia and how in the 1700s, I think it was 1600s, she thought it might be a good idea to have education in Russia. And they sent over the little Freemason foot soldier and he started to set up an education system. And before Catherine knew it, she had 400 of these filthy bastards sitting in her parliament. And then Catherine, the great of Russia, discovered they'd interfered with her son, at which point Catherine, the great of Russia, closed all their printing houses, outlawed Freemasonry, ran them all out of town and shut down all of their lodges. That, of course, angered the Freemasons. And they began trotting out the West, the mind control program of commie, commie, commie. They are the enemy, the commie, the commie. Remember that? Yeah, turns out they're not. No. Turns out your average Joe Russian just like your average Joe Aussie. Turns out your average Joe Chinaman, just like your average Joe Anzac. Isn't that funny? And yet what's the timeline for the filth? Oh, that's right. Research the history of Freemasonry. Yeah, yeah. And who was where, when? I'll tell you another one that's really interesting, and that's Japan. Yeah, Japan, that's really interesting. 18, early 1800s, the Freemasons marched into Japan. Interesting, isn't it, Australia? You see, the Freemasonry, the one world government, the UN, the UN is actually the administration branch of Freemason Demole. And you see, they like the children young. It's very important to indoctrinate them young. Hence the reason for marching into academia, because that's where you can, in fact, find the children. Important to set up bureaucratic, religious and charitable institutions to further assist the abuses. And brings us back to people like Alistair Webster, doesn't it, in our little lifetime? Remember him? Superintendent of Derrick Boys Home, Woods Royal Commission. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, under the branding of a liberal. Then he, twi he twice ran with Fred Niles Christian Democrat Party. Yeah, his niece-in-law now sits in the federal parliament as the member for Mali. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I've heard, I've heard on the grapevine that it was actually Anne that got my Facebook page shut down. Apparently, 
talking about the fact in the last two years that she's received nearly $2 million in government grants for her little charity upset her somewhat. Not at all upset about the abuses done to the boys and girls of Australia, but she is upset about the funding being exposed. Interesting, isn't it? You know. And then, of course, we've got things like Tony Abbott out of St Ignatius College, Riverview. And he was, in fact, a former Prime Minister. And whilst he was in office... He had no problem releasing the confidential cabinet papers into the Pink Bats Royal Commission, did he? Yet it never occurred to him to revoke the suppression orders and release the documents to the public. Remembering, of course, Senator Heffernan's speech. I have produced a set of documents under an order to produce, which disturbingly names a whole lot of prominent people as alleged pedophiles. There is a former Prime Minister on this list and it's a police document. I did ask the Commissioner, James Rowland Woodgate, the those in the judiciary frequenting the Costello's Boys Brothel in Gellert Street, Kings Cross. And the Commissioner did say, we've decided not to revisit that issue. The public would lose confidence in the judiciary. And here we are today, with six and a half million Victorians, effectively under house arrest. The economy inches closer to collapse. And I would urge my fellow Australians Please Google Yuri Brezmanov and watch a few of his videos. You will find them more entertaining than anything on your television. And then understand how this network is operated. Pedophiles need children. They have 300 years jump. They know exactly what they're looking for in a child that they want to groom. And then spend a moment and read those 3,953 testimonies. You will learn a great deal from reading those testimonies with regards to the pattern and how it unfolds, how it is repeated through government institutions, charity organisations, religious institutions. It's undeniable when you take the time to read them. I would also ask you to do a bit of research I would also ask you to do a bit of research in regards to Venezuela. Venezuela had a population of 27 million, so not that much different from Australia. Venezuela has, in fact, the largest oil deposits in the world. Venezuela was, in fact, occupied 10 years ago. And now people in Venezuela die on the streets of starvation. If you don't think this could happen to Australia in the space of 10 years, you are mistaken. It is unfolding right before your eyes right now. I'll try and be back with you this evening. This was just the afternoon update as I couldn't get on this morning. And um, I'll try and be back with you this, after, this evening, guys, with the usual update, provided I can get on. Um, this was actually my third attempt at trying to do a live this afternoon. So the other thing I would ask you guys all is to please be mindful. Why are they censoring average Joes so hard, do you think? Because we are gaining momentum. And you guys, really so important that you know these the history of these places that I've just spoke about. So spend a minute and watch it again, <laughs> you know. Okay, guys, I will see you later on this evening, hopefully, God willing, and have a great day. Bye, folks.